Hello, hello. God bless you, God keep you. Well, I'm listening to, I'm a soldier in the arm. It has been a fantastic Sunday. I heard all the songs that I love. I mean, all of the songs I really love. Remember that? I'm a soldier in the army and Jesus on the main line. Precious Lord, take my hand. I mean, it was a merely a beautiful music. God is keeping me. Those are the songs that I love. And the reason, uh, let me go back and let me pray for you. I pray that God restores your health and your strength if you're losing it. And if you have it, I pray to God that you keep it. God watch over and give you peace and joy. Amen. Uh, what I was saying is I love songs like that. I'm a soldier in the army and things like that. It was beautiful. Sometimes it's like they say, God's reading your mail. And, uh, I mean, it was wonderful. I loved the senior choir. I went to the, the church I often go to, the one I go to at 12. And the pastor repeated the sermon, which was wow. It was weird. It was Wednesday's, last Wednesday sermon. And he said it for Thursday. That was odd, because usually Saturday he say the sermon that he did, you know. Uh, he, he usually on Sundays he did, does the sermon he did on Saturday. So it was different. It was unique, and it? It was special. It was what I needed to hear. Uh, tearing up those numbers. <laughs> yeah, those numbers and stuff like that. Holding on to to the past, because you're thinking that, okay, if it don't come through with God, you know, if this this vision don't work out, then, you know, I got something to file back on. And it was funny because I felt like saying, ouch, because, yeah, that's where I was at, you know. Yeah, things don't work out because this right here, this walking through, mm, it's very difficult. I'm not going to say difficult. It's hell. And if that's a cuss word, it's a cuss word. This is hell. Because you don't even know what you're waiting for. It's like I'm in the twilight zone. I've heard a lot of positive messages, you know, Joel Osteen, T.D. Jackson, and all that that's on the page, you know, Bates and St. Stephen, and a lot of churches and a lot of people. I hear a lot of positive things. It's beautiful. But today, you know, uh, 10 to the 8 o'clock service, it was beautiful to hear the old music because that fed my soul. The word feeds my soul. Cause, but the... But the songs see myself because I feel like I'm in the arm and I got a march. You know what I'm saying? Don't fall down in the sin. You know what I'm saying? Don't fall into lust. Don't fall into hatred. Don't fall into racism. Don't fall in to gossip. Don't fall. Don't fall. Don't go back to where you was, what you used to do. Keep going forward. And that's what I like about when they sing the songs about being a soldier. Hey, you have to, you know, not let anything just push you off the path. You got to be strong. Put on your, your shield. <clears throat> your shield and get your sword and all that type of thing in your helmet. I love precious Lord take my hand because sometimes, you know, I just feel like I'm drowning and the only thing that I that can pull me back up is God's hand. He can only just drop his hand down, his hand of mercy, his hand of grace, drop it down to me. You know, uh I have a big old pillow in front of me. I have my little my little shirt on, my little purple shirt on. I'm not sitting back here with nothing on, but I don't know. It's just, it's a beautiful day today, and it's a day to enjoy, and, and I don't know. It'd just be nice if I had some friends, somebody to kick it with and talk to, and, you know, even if I sit on the porch, you know, I get tired of riding around. I often see some great sights, but I don't want to keep burning gas, I want to say. And the pastor hit on that today. I, I, I heard it last time, but I didn't hear it. And so it was nice, really, in reality, to hear it again because I, 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 I spent. I had spent my money. What made me broke, you know what I'm saying? I had spent my money, and I was just... Uh, 
really I didn't waste it and I think that's why I didn't, you know, this needed to be fixed, that the house needed to be fixed, the car needed to be fixed. And and I just kept getting into it. And that's what pulled me into debt. It wasn't like I went out and I drank and I partied and I wowed out and I went out of town, which I would have loved to do, not so much drinking, but hey. You know, things like that. I did it was like, okay, this need needs to be met, but at the same time, you know, what I, it's true what he said is I should have saved my money. I should have went on and stayed fed, stayed fast with that job and did this and did that. I should have stayed on my grind. I should have kept my head above water. But, I mean, it seemed like it was coming at me so fast. And it's like I still have. I was thinking I still have. Then I start pinching off. Well, I wouldn't mind having me a burger. I'm going to treat myself. And those little treat myself things. They added up when you're treating yourself. And even when I was working, it was a petty job. You know, working petty jobs. You got to have a real job, knowing that the income's coming. So I can pay bills and still have two or three in my pocket. So, like I said, my personality. I have to look at that, my personality. You know, I know God made me, created me. But a lot of stuff, he didn't put in me. Some of the things the world put in me, things that I went through, things that I endured for pain whole lot of pain that made me the way I am where I try to be so self-sufficient where I was so self-sufficient where I was so independent because I know if I didn't get it then what is it nobody gonna give me nothing ain't nobody gonna do nothing for me unless I do it myself that was my mentality and right now here it is I'm sitting back and I'm waiting for something to be done and it's difficult to sit back when you have been in charge of your life to wait for somebody to do something for you. And I know I'm, one of my problems and one of my sins, one of my defects is that, hey, I don't have patience. You know, you know, I would like to pray for patience, but I don't want to pray for patience because I know what I've learned. I've been around a long time. Be careful what you ask God for because he can give you that patience, uh, waiting and, and learning to be patient. He can bring it about in, in an unusual way, sometimes with pain. You know, so I was thinking today, you know, uh, I was talking to my cousin, you know, I dropped some stuff off to her when I left church and we were talking about life and stuff like that. You know, how, how we have kids and you look for your, you know, you don't look for your kids to help you, but when you down, it surprises you. You mean that your kids don't quite understand and take, they take for granted what you're going through. You know, and anyway, I got home and my son ended up giving me a little little change. It's a blessing, you know. And uh, uh ain't too proud to beg. Uh, ain't too proud to beg. It's a song about the temptations and uh. It uh, it, I always love that song because I'm okay, you know, I'm okay. I know how to stretch money when I got to. I'm, I'm learning, you know what I'm saying? I'm learning. But what gets me is that, to me, this, this shouldn't bother me, but it does. When having to ask for something, having to have your hand out, having to be low, having to Today, I was trying to find something to put on, and oh man, I don't know. This is just real talk. I don't know. I I, I I hate talking about it, but then hey, maybe it'll help somebody. Here it is. I go in my closet and I'm looking to find something to put on, and all I could find, I found this red dress. So I throw the red dress out, then I look and I see like a little oil stain or something on it, but I didn't care. I put it on anyway. I put on my black jacket. I was going to put on my heels. But I realized I couldn't really walk in them. I didn't want to stress. So I took my heels off and I put my flat shoes on and I went into church. And the point I'm making, look at bummy. Look at bummy. You know, I remember I could go to church. I throw on me something. I had some fits in our Hey, I'm going to put this on. Put that on. You know. I could be. I could have been stingy. I could have been unwise and went and took it back. Bought me a little five or six dollar dress. I went to the DAV and got me a couple of dresses. You know, but those things that used to be important, it's not important anymore. You know, it's not important to the extent that I'm not going to go to church. 
it was past. I, I don't have nothing to wear. I'm not going. You know, although I go out there, but you know, hey, I, that was an excuse so I could rip and run the streets or something. You know, and that's been very rare. But most of the time, I always had something to throw on. Throw my little flags on my pants or whatever when I'm out the door. But just looking at myself, it's not half far I was up. It's just half far I, 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 I'm down. You know, and I know the pastor said, and people say, yeah, count your blessings, and thank God I count them one by one, and I count my blessings, but at the same time I see my blessings, I got to see that I'm not where I used to be, you know, I, 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 I miss, I miss some things, I miss having money in my pocket, I miss going to things, I didn't go to the, the little churches, this extravaganza, because in my heart, you know, I went out to go to church, and I forgot they was having it. I didn't stay because I knew I would see something that I wanted and then to be standing there wanting something and not be a, being able to purchase it, not being able to buy anything. You know, I got the money, but the money is needed for the future. But I, God says, stay into today. Don't worry about tomorrow. But I'm in a situation. I love the Lord with all my heart, body, soul, and man. But I got to take this, what I have, and I got to save it for tomorrow. Hmm. Yeah, paradox. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Yeah. But it is what it is because I'm looking at that. I should have saved here. I should have saved there. But like I said, in reality, nah. I'm not going to sit here and try to wipe it and run into that little lab right there. Like I said, I didn't sit back and run out here and get the outfits and do all of that. You know what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, I went to Walmart. My kids gave me money for my birthday. I went to Walmart and I bought a whole lot of shirts so I would have to buy any clothes. So I haven't purchased any clothes. It was just like I said, the main thing, things was happening. You know, I, the point I'm making is this, some of this is God's intention. This ain't all my intention. Now, nah, I ain't going to put that on my plate. I already know. Like perfect example, let's talk real talk. The refrigerator is going out on one side. Just like last time when I saved my money and I thought I was on my feet, then the roof, you know, then the yard work, this needs to be done, that needs to be done, who's going to do it, hello, so it was things, you know, I didn't just really just sit back and say, hey, let me waste my money, let me go get a bag of weed or something like that, you know, let me go out here to roof Chris or something like that and splurge, no, I didn't do any of that, you know, the only one thing that I could say, between last month and this month, really was this month, that I, I went above and beyond, I spent, and that was only like, I think I spent $16, something like that. Uh, a lady friend of mine, they invited me out to the, uh, to the uh, roadhouse, uh, fake roadhouse or whatever, Texas roadhouse, and uh, everybody had to spend on themselves, and so I bought me a steak and some fries. And uh, it came with a salad or something. Uh, so that's what I had. So that was the main splurge thing. Other than that, getting gas for the car and just basic living. You know, just basic things. You know, but, uh, you know, I, you know, I thank God for my blessings. I see my blessings. I got a roof over my head. But, you know, I, like I said, I hear people say, thank God for your blessings and your clothes, but I'm just going to say this, uh, and it's not that I'm just setting up complaining, but yeah, you look at the outside, and, and you look at the outside, and you hear me talk, and yeah, I got transportation, yes, I have a roof over my head, but if I told you the thing, <laughs> told you, told you, feel that with everything in you, if I told you, you know, just sit down and display the things that's going on in my life. I didn't cut, but almost, believe me, most people would have blew their brains out. Because preachers preach about it, you know, but a lot of people don't make it real. And what I'm saying is this. And I'm going to use an illustration. When, when Elijah. When Elijah had killed all the prophets. And he did God's work. 
in a mighty powerful way. He did God's work. After he did God's bid and everything, he was strong, he was confident and all that. But all of a sudden Jezebel came about and she said, yeah, I'm going to kill you. And he ran. People don't understand, you know, not everybody until you've been there. But people don't understand how much, how powerful a threat is. But let me go, I can go deeper with you and go into the justice system with it. And these people, people that have been in jail and people that had to face a judge, they understand what I'm talking about and this is where my life is. This is the paradox and this is what I'm talking about where people would have blown their head out. If they knew my life, they would kill themselves. Because my life is under a threat. And it's been that way numerous times. What somebody going to do, what they're going to take, what they, you know, whatever. But it's like when Jezebel told Elijah she was going to kill him in the Bible when she said that. And I know a lot of people probably like, darn, he had all that power, but then he's running from a woman. Yeah, it, it didn't matter if it was a woman that did the threat or not. That's really what made it powerful because it came from a woman and it didn't come from a It made it silly because if you think about it, God said, I use silly things. You know what I'm saying? That will confound your your mind. Things that you can't even comprehend. And I can either bless you or I can curse you with it. I paraphrase that a lot, darn, but because I know he can do some things and you be like, darn, how did they die by the car turning over fifteen times? You know what I'm saying? Uh uh, how did they die and there only was an inch of water in the tub? Yeah, but that person might have been cruel, might you know, it might have been whatever, whatever, but Look, odd things like that, you know. Ah, right, let's go with. Like he said, I could found your man. Like, how is that person living? They never held down a job, but all their bills paid, the water's paid, everything's paid. You know what I'm saying? And, and they walking around. How is that? Those are the things I'm talking about that can confound, found your imagination and your man. But getting back to Elijah running from her, a threat. A threat can kill a person. A threat can cause a person to kill themselves. A threat can cause a person to kill somebody else. And like I said, let me go into the justice system talking about threat. You know, <laughs> if you tell a person that's your enemy, what you're going to do to them over the telephone, I in person, you tell a person, hey, look, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to come over and blow your house up. I'm going to mess you up. You know, watch your back because I'm coming for you. You know, that's called terroristic threatening. And all along, you're not even going over. You don't have no arms. You don't have no legs. You just did all this verbally, but you don't have no arms, arms or legs to get to that person. But just the fact that you use your mouth to threaten that person, to intimidate that person, that person will, the court system will lock you up for that. That's called terroristic threatening. Because you're telling a person what you're going to do to them. And that person is sitting there or standing somewhere thinking that you're coming for them. And that could go a couple of ways. But at the, at, but the story we're on right now is that that person is thinking you're coming for them. And they could be petrified and they could commit suicide depending on how frightened they are of you and of that threat. So, you know, yeah. Like I said, I just have a lot of those. I'm not going to get deep with those. But yeah, you know. So when I'm talking about why this not that I'm sitting back complaining, I'm saying that man, life can throw so many things at you, man, like a candy, uh, uh, candy man with a hook. It's just coming at you, coming at you, coming at you. Not one time, two times, three times. And it is the pastor said that be careful. I like one of the pastors I was reading about was talking about, I think it was Joel Osteen talking about be careful what you ask for, and it's true. I used to always pray, Lord, your bass pray. Lord, enlarge my territory. <laughs> and Pastor Mal said, Ooh, Jesus, be careful with that one. Don't ask that. And that was like in the, uh, it was like around 2002, 2003, somewhere like that. And I would pray that. You know, that's what I wanted in my uh, homeless shelter. Lord, enlarge my territory. That was my main prayer. I would stay into that. And he kept saying no. And then I stopped for a while, but then I did again. I started because I heard a lot of people say that's a powerful prayer. Because when you pray like that, they used to say that that makes that bring that makes God want to step out and perform a miracle. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, okay, I need one, so I would pray. It didn't come about, but I wouldn't know because I fell off again and would start drinking. But 
Yeah, uh, Lord and Lord is my territory. Yeah, you got to be careful what you pray and ask God for because he can give it to you. And I just pray, though, I pray that the Lord gives me strength to endure this race. You know, I, that's what I pray. I pray, you know, to give me strength. And um, I don't know, just, just walking. And it's nice, it's nice to have people encourage you, but people encouraging me from a distance. And it's nice, though. It's nice. I didn't see that chick in church today, so that was nice. You know, the one that thinks she could prophesy. I didn't see her. But uh, I got to talk about T.D. Jakes again. But he, he had a sermon. Uh, he said, leading well, uh, bleeding well, lead." You know, and uh, he's talking about a lot of pastors, how uh, uh, a lot of pastors be pastoring churches, and they got so many things, you know what I'm saying, they got so many things, they have sicknesses, ailments, you know, they have uh, 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 financial situations in their lives and all this, uh, uh, their marriage is in jeopardy, but they, they, got, they stand up at the pulpit and they continue to preach anyway. I'm not a preacher, but I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to be open and honest, and if I feel like if I'm falling, if I'm angry, if I'm not where I want to be, if I'm not comfortable, I'm going to open my mouth and talk about it. Yes, I do want a church, and I don't know what you call my, if you would be called a preacher to stand up. I don't know all of that stuff. All I know is I want a church. But other than that, as far as if, uh, if God did put me in charge of a church, nah, I would keep, I would stay open because here's what I have seen. If I keep everything in me, like I'm sharing with you all of this stuff now, I don't like sharing with you. I don't like telling you. I don't even know if anybody really hears. I know the videos get shared. I don't know who they get shared to, but I, I know it's a lot of men that keep on trying to talk to me and stuff, you know, that's from uh, Nigeria and all that type of thing. They want to chat with me all the time. But, so evidently it's traveling <laughs> abroad, but I don't, uh, I don't care because it's all for me. God said, let's bear one another's burden. You know, tell the truth and the truth shall set you free. Open your mouth and tell somebody that you have pain. Because walking around here and you trying to have some things and you asking God for a big vision. Because what I'm asking God for is a miracle. I'm talking about when I'm big. My, the, what I'm asking God is so popular. Is that, is, that, is that correct? Preposterous. <laughs> oh, yeah. So unbelievable. It's like when Moses parted the sea. The main thing a lot of uh, people, I believe, atheists, and a lot of them, that's one of the main things that they really don't want to believe that God parted the sea. Just, you know, oh, how could that possibly happen? But people fail to realize that we're in a time, I ain't, I'm not even going to go that deep. Miracles occur. But until you witness it, then you can see, okay, I can see how that happened. It's like a lady was on Facebook and she was talking about she had cancer all over the brain. When they looked at it, they could see cancer everywhere. And she went back some weeks or months later and they said it was gone. So people, how we're done, maybe the imagery thing, maybe the machine, the MRI machine was broke or whatever. I guess she got healed fine. But people fail to realize the same way that Moses parted that sea, think about it. The same way Moses fought, her head was healed. Think about Moses fought in the sea. He used the staff. And just think about the waters going up. They wasn't disbelieving people like we are. They were in a time where dragons and different things like that was running around. Faith and belief was strong. They had sorcerers. There are things we couldn't even comprehend that was going on back then. They don't even know how the people build the pyramid. So how are we going to sit back and talk about it? I believe he parted the sea. I don't care what nobody say. I believe he parted the sea. I believe Jesus died on the cross. I believe those things. I believe things like that can happen because I've seen miracles in my life. I've seen miracles. I've had, I, I, I am a miracle. Let me put it that way. I am a walking miracle. I've been cut on a couple of times. And by God's grace and mercy, I'm still hurt. I had people call me on the phone, doctors, and say, <laughs> start crying, you, you, you hurt, you fight, you fight them. Believe me, that's why I be telling you, I don't be talking unnecessary, I just don't tell everything, I'm trying to give you bits and pieces, because you don't really need to know everything, 
But I'm gonna tell you, tell you a lot. You know, yeah, I've been in the ring boxing. I'm in the ring boxing every day. And like I said, you know, I, I like the song. I won't complain. I'm just letting you know where I am and I, that I'm walking. You know, so if I fall down, I don't want nobody sitting back saying, oh man, she did all that talking and she was doing this or that and then look at her now, you know. Now, y'all, you're not going to be able to look down on me because I'm going to tell you where I'm at and I'm telling you that I'm walking and I'm stumbling and I'm doing the best I can. I'm doing the best I can because I'm not doing it for me. In and above myself, I am nothing. I am, I'm nothing but a filthy rag. You can wipe your feet on me and I still wouldn't be dirty enough. That's how filthy I am. I'm not worthy to be called a child of God. You know, it's only His grace and His mercy. You know, mm. yeah. But like I said, I love the Lord and I thank Him and I, I thank Him for His grace. I thank Him for allowing me to go to to the church. I thank God for loving me when I don't love myself. I thank God for putting patience. Just a little bit, because I didn't really want to do this. And in my mind, my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm wrestling all the time. I didn't even want to go to church. I said, oh, I'm probably late. And get up, got to get up, get your clothes on, go on out the door. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it's, and, and now God's got me in. I'm just move. I'm just automatic. It's just get up. I'm moving. I'm halfway to church before I'm realizing, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. You know, no breakfast. I'm, I'm out the door. I'm out the door. You know, not my will, but that will be done. I'm just moving. It's just automatic. I get up, I'm moving. Put your clothes on, you know, wash up, put your clothes on, okay. I do so many things, you know, so automatic. I'm like, okay, darn, did I do this? Did I do that? Because it's automatic, you know. I don't want my love for him to be automatic because I don't want to ever forget his grace and mercy is on me because if I ever do that, then I will slip. I will backslide. I will go backwards into what I used to be into. If I take his love and his grace for, 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 for granted, if I do that, yeah, yeah. So now, that's not automatic. My getting up and moving around, that's automatic. My praise and my worship to him, oh, no, 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 that's not automatic. That's for real. Yeah, that's for real. Oh, I love that song coming to me. My worship is for real. That's a powerful song too. An amazing grace. See, that's, that's what I'm saying. There's some new songs that I heard. They're powerful. But amazing grace. The people of that day, when they sung that, they was going through some things. And I, I'm going through things like that. Because God said, do this, do that. You know, and then he's dropping little pebbles. Little pebbles. Like little breadcrumbs in front of me. And then when it's dropped, I got to figure out. It's like the pastor preached the sermon. It's about choices. You know, what choices to make. Then I went to another church last week, and he was talking the same thing about choices. And it's the choices that we make, the little choices that end up being big choices because they define us and they take us to the next day, to our tomorrow. So we have to be very careful. I know I have to be very careful on the decisions I make. So when it, in my life, when he drops a little Look, look, breadcrumbs. I gotta look at it. I can't just keep on wild when he's driving on. I gotta look at. Okay, it, should I take that? Okay, do I take this? Let me turn it over. I gotta turn it over. I gotta look at it. Okay, this because so many times I have fallen. I have missed my call. I have missed my purpose. I have missed the mark because I would take those pebbles and I would just pick them up and I would just take them out. Oh, okay, I'm going to keep on going with it, eat it up, keep on going with it, kick it to the curb, whatever, and move on. Now I have learned. I have been broken enough in my life now that I know that I need to take and look and watch. My mom always say, watch as well as pray. And I used to laugh because I'm like, oh my God, here she go. What does that mean? All these little riddles, all these little rats. But I understand now. We got to watch as well as pray. Watch and see the people. Watch the people around you. Watch who try to enter into your life. Watch who try to be your friend. Watch who want to be your husband. Watch who want to be your man. Watch all of those things like that. You know, why are you trying to talk to me now? Mm. You didn't used to want to talk to me. I'm not even the type. I heard, I overheard you say that you like this woman with her. You like this woman with go her. You like this woman with whatever. Now you want to talk to me? Watch that. Watch that. 
You know, when I was down, you didn't want to talk to me. Now I'm up, you want to talk to me. Now I'm up, you want to talk to me. When I was down, you didn't want to talk to me. Watch all of that. Watch all of that. You know what I'm saying? That's real. But like I said, uh, God's pulling me and he's drawing me and he's showing me some things. And, and uh, I just got to take it in, pray about it, and then do what he says do. Um, like I said, uh, I'm, I'm all right. I probably know I heard taking a little ride or a stroll or something like that, you know. Um, there's two things in my head I want to say. Something I learned yesterday, but then also, uh, I'm going to leave that one. Well, I'm going to say it real quick, and then I'll tell you some good news, which is good news, but I'm going to tell you some better news. Uh, I went down to the waterfront because I love, I always love walking down there and I used to love walking by the water because when I would walk by the water, I would always be reminded of God, you know, that the, as big as the water is down at the Ohio River, as big as it is, God is bigger than that. So it always would remind me that God is bigger. So I was walking down there yesterday and as I was walking, it messed me up. For the first time ever in my life, it wasn't big anymore. Nothing was surprising. My love for that area, it wasn't there anymore. It's gone. And for a brief moment, it frightened me. Because it was like, oh, wow, you know, what's up? It, it, am I losing my conscious contact with God? What's wrong? What's wrong? What was me and God? Are we not on one page anymore? Are we, are we falling apart? Is our relationship in trouble? You know, why is it I don't feel that this water is bigger than God anymore? And then, I, I, I can't really totally explain to you, but God was just letting me know it's old. It's old. And it's time to walk away from it. And I don't know. Sometimes I, I'm, a, I'm a really type of, I'm a sentimental person. But it hit me, you know. The city that I have grown up in and I thought I had a lot of love for. It's changed. It didn't change. I'm going to take that back. What I seen was reality. I'm going to say that and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to switch and then I'm going to get out for her. It wasn't that it's changed. For the first time in my life, I've seen Louisville, Kentucky for what it really is. And that hurt. I've seen the reality of it gradually, slowly, but surely. I've seen it. I've seen it. You know, I heard voices. Oh, what you said? Oh, sh shut up. I don't want to hear that. I'm talking about when you, I've seen the city for what it really is. When you look at it. I used to think it was so beautiful looking at this or that. And now it's like some scales have fallen off of my eyes. I just see it. And it's not pretty like it used to be. It's not pretty, you know. And I have a, I have a right to my opinion, and that is my opinion. And that's what I'm saying. It's not like it used to be, you know. And God's changing me, and He's changing my my view. And that's frightening because I want to be in that comfort zone. I like staying there comfortable in an uncomfortable situation but now all of a sudden guys like okay look at it for real look at this person look at these people and God I had been doing that but I was like okay you know we can't be, be without we can't survive ourselves we have to be around people so I would make do of a bad situation and now God has the pastor hit it so well on the head when he talked about the friends, the people that when, G, when he talked about when Judas identified Jesus with a kiss and he called him friend. That's what happened with me. I was associating with some people and the person that I called a friend, I thought he was my friend. He turned on me and betrayed me and he, oh, he cut me to thread. He cut me like Freddy Cougar cuts paper. He told me up. It was scissor hand me and it backed me up. 
Because I was, I'm stubborn, like I said, I'm going to keep going around these people. I'm going to keep going around these people. You know, I guess some of them was true. I guess some true ones. But as far as this, oh, nah. You did that, and I thought I wanted to go back out. I said, nah, leave that alone. That's the same thing now. I don't know if he's going to move me out of the city or not. I wish he would. I don't know. But like I said, the things that I thought, and I thought was beautiful, they, I, there no, there's no appeal there anymore. It's just like being in a relationship with a man, and everything was hunky-dory at first. You know, oh, yeah, he's fine, and all of a sudden you start looking to her. You know, I didn't realize that he disrespects women in this way. I didn't realize he don't like kids. I didn't realize that he don't like himself. Hello. I mean, that's the discovery that I've just, I've just seen. You know, and it's, it is what it is. At least I know that God doesn't have me stagnated. I'm not sitting still that I'm moving and that he's doing a work in me. So even though I'm telling you how I feel and I'm not saying that everything's okay, I'm saying that I'm surviving. That's what I'm saying. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. And in this army, I, when you're a soldier in the army, you're going to see some things. You're going to see some violence. You're going to see some bloodshed. You know, you're going to see people hurting. You know, you're going to see a lot of things. And so that's what happens. And the only thing that's on your mind is just to survive, just to come through. So, anyway, with that being said, uh, like I said, God bless you. God bless, God bless me. God bless anything that you put your hand on that will get you food and get you clothes and get the things that you need to sustain you. May your heart and your mind stay fixed on God. As I was riding, I was thinking, and I was talking about the steps. And I was riding up the street, and I was thinking, the steps that I had seen, they was, would be beautiful in the back of the church. As you come out the back door, that, those steps that I seen, those would be perfect there. So when you come out, and it will be a back door, and that would be beautiful at the back. Right at the back door, those steps. And like I said, sometimes it seems like I'm complaining, but you know, God, it's a song uh, just came to me, Love Won't Let Me Wait. And I used to be like, what does that mean? <laughs> and it's like, God won't let me, if I, it's my choice to follow, but God won't let me forget the vision. He keeps it there. When I want to say no and I want to do it and whine and complain and do my little, have my little my little pity party. God comes back and, and he shows me something and he'll bring the he'll bring about the vision, something of the vision. Now he'll bring something new that needs to be added to the church. He he just comes up with something. He he just keeps my mind stayed on him. You know. He does. He keeps my mind stayed on him. And and that's a beautiful thing. And that's a friend. You know, that's another old song. There is none like the the uh, Lord Lord Jesus. There's no, not one, a friend of Jesus. And that's what I'm talking about, them old sounds. I don't know, they just be embedded in my soul, that old sound. Because there's none. There's nobody like that. That's a real friend. That when you're feeling down and out, and I had a friend like at a 30-something years, I would feel bad, feel sad, or whatever, drinking out so she could always make me laugh. It was always just her thing, you know, I'm going to make her laugh. Janice feeling bad, let me make her laugh. And that, to me, that's like God. You know, it's not that I have to always choose him. Often he chooses me. He chooses to keep me focused. And I love that. As long as I accept his help. You know, he, 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 he'll just put in my mind. Like I said about the I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about that. All this got to be paid. This. And all of a sudden he put in like, wow. Bam. So still, they can go at the back door. And so, you know, this need to be fixed. Do this. You know, and sometimes it's so much in my head I just wish I could just write it down. I wish I could just write it down, get someone, hey, let's work together and write it down. But there's no one like that. There's no one like that. There's no one like that. You know, like I said, one day at a time. And I took the test, some good news. I took my test for my little job and stuff like that. So I should be getting paid for that, to get paid to take the test. New technology. And so, but it is what it is. You know, there's some hope down the road. It's just getting there. But I'm like, you know, 
I don't understand why he has this gap right there. I don't understand that gap. So to me, the gap is like, okay, let's see. I'm giving you time. Are you what you gonna do? You gonna mess up? Are you for me? Are you against me? That's what I feel. God is saying, are you for me? Are you against me? Oh Lord, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why Jesus loves me. I don't know why he cares. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. But oh, I'm glad. I'm glad he did. Woo! If I could sing, I'd be singing all the time. See? Thought I was down, did you? Yeah, see how everybody be? Just talking about it. Just talking about it. All though. Just talking about it. Because I've seen it. I've seen it. You know. Uh, the guy at church today, he was singing uh, Worth. And uh, his last name was Hawkins. And I was singing about Walter Hawkins. Uh, back in the day, remember why the house said, what is this? Yeah. That makes me uh, laugh when I feel like crying. Whatever it is, it won't let me. Yeah. Oh, them songs. Mm. One of my favorite songs when I was young, and then I'm getting out for her because I'm in 41 minutes. Satan, they're going to tear your kingdom down. Remember that? Satan, they're going to tear your kingdom down. You've been building your kingdom all over this land. But Satan, they're going to tear your kingdom down. And I was a little child. And a chick, she was in the uh, motorcycle club. My stepbrother's friend. I'm riding with her. I don't know. Older people used to always come and ride with me. And she used to drive real fast. And she used to have a stick shift. And she was pulling that stick shift. I think she had a trans am. Trans am on fiber. And I was like six or seven. Well, I was probably was eight or nine. And I'm riding with her. She's shifting these girls. And she was playing that. And it always stayed in my mind. That song. Satan, they're going to tear your kingdom down. You know. Surely Caesar. Yeah. So. Like I said. God bless you. God keep you. Keep your head up. <laughs> God bless you.